Hey everyone, welcome to the College Lead YouTube channel. My name is Kristen and I'm here to help you perfect your college application process, from planning extracurriculars all the way to writing your personal statements for college applications. Today I'll be answering a very popular question on how to get a research internship. This video will be applicable to both high school students and also college students if you're wondering how the heck to get started. So be sure to watch this video from the very beginning all the way to the end. Let's get started. I'll start with providing a brief introduction of College Lead and all the resources that you can take advantage of. I will also discuss and list out different research options that are available to you because I know most of the time it can be really difficult to find a research opportunity, so there are alternatives that you can consider. I'll then walk through how exactly to find a lab that suits your interests, and then we'll talk about email best practices, and I'll share the exact email that I used to land my first research internship in college. So with just a little bit about College Lead, I started College Lead in April of last year with the goal of increasing access to college prep information. Having gone to a very crowded public school, I know it can be really challenging to find one-on-one -on -one time with your college counselor, and oftentimes the alternative is having to pay for expensive sessions with a uh, private institution that offers college counseling services. I don't think it should have to be that way, and that's why I really work to make college prep information as accessible as possible, as well as share um, less heard narratives about what it's like going to college either as a low-income student, a min minority, or as an international student. So. Feel free to check out all the different videos I post here at College Lead and also subscribe to support the channel. Also, don't forget to check out my Slack channel at mycollegelead.com. You can reach me there one on one with questions as well as get your questions answered with other members of the community. So with that, let's dive into the bulk of this uh, video where we'll talk about research options. We all know that it is very difficult to find a research internship, and sometimes it's just good to be aware of the alternatives that are available to you. So I bucketed these opportunities into two main categories. First, established programs, and second, to sort of build your own. For established programs, you can often find any university pre-college programs, for instance, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, Harvard, and other schools have those programs that are available for high school students. I will link a couple of those in the description below, so be sure to check those out if that's something that you would be interested in. Another alternative to consider is any local shadowing or volunteer programs that are available to you. For instance, in the area where I lived in California, uh, there was a local hospital, Kaiser Permanente, and they had a high school volunteering program that you could apply for. And students would then get experience of working in the hospital, interacting with patients, and also getting the chance to ask nurses and doctors what their day-to-day -day is like. I would highly recommend uh, to get started to find these opportunities to ask your high school college counselor because oftentimes these local programs will share the application information with college counselors in the area. So go ahead and send your college counselor, your local college counselor, an email to ask if any of these opportunities are available. Another option that you can consider, and this is one that I actually did when I was in high school, is to take advanced courses. There are many courses available on Coursera, on edX, I'll link those below in case if you're interested, and it's a really good chance to continue to develop your knowledge in advanced uh, research topics, whether it's neuroscience, psychology, or other aspects of biology, chemistry, or physics. In addition to online courses, you can also take in-person courses at your local community college, and that's actually a great way to knock out some college requirements as well. So what I did in high school is actually take a microbiology course at my local community college. It was very affordable and I learned a lot through that experience. It was two hour lectures and three hours of lab, five days a week. Very intense, but I learned a lot from it. I even ended up asking my teacher or professor at the time to write a recommendation letter for me to speak to my strengths in biology, since that's something I wanted to study. So do keep in mind, if you are unable to find a research program or local shadowing or volunteer programs, you can also take advanced courses, and that's often an option that is very accessible regardless of where you are, especially with local community colleges being affordable as well as online courses oftentimes being free. I also just want to say that you do not need to have a research experience in high school in order to get into a good college. I'm an example of that. I just took an advanced course at my local community college and my first lab experience was in college. So there's no expectation at all that as a high school student, you need to have a research internship experience. So be sure to consider these alternatives. 
If you have trouble finding any of these programs, one other option to consider is to build your own experience. There are many different ways to do this, and I would recommend two different strategies. The first strategy would be to directly email potential mentors, and I'll talk more in the rest of this video on how to do that. Another option is to ask your teachers, coaches, and friends if they know anyone who uh, you might be able to work with. And I've actually recently uh, shared a video on how to get an internship that doesn't exist. And that was an example of how I landed an internship at the local district attorney's office just by emailing my mock trial coach. So be sure to check that video and I'll try to link it up here as well. And in that video, I actually shared the exact email that I used when I was asking my coach for the internship opportunity. So be sure to check those out. Okay, that was a lot of information, but it was a lot of good information. In the rest of this video, I will focus more so on this piece here because the rest of these are quite straightforward. They will all have their own application processes. So I'll talk about how to find labs that you might be interested in and then how to email potential mentors. So yes, now we're going to talk about how to find a lab, if that's something that you would like to do. So step one is just understanding how a research lab works. I don't know about you, but I had zero knowledge of this even when I was in high school. And my first year of college, this is something that I had to learn through asking a lot of very silly sounding questions. And again, no questions are dumb. It's always good to know. But I'll give you a, a little cheat sheet here in terms of how a research lab even operates or works. So this is sort of the hierarchy of what a lab looks like. You will start with the principal investigator, often called the PI. The PI is oftentimes the professor or the head of the lab, and they're the one who determines and runs and supervises all of the projects that go on, as well as the research that is done. A level, the next level under the PI are the postdocs. So these are people who have already earned their PhD and are just continuing to get more research experience by working in another lab. So these people might be in their 30s or 40s or even older and they're pretty much set in their career and they're just going here for extra experience. Underneath postdocs you will find graduate students. Graduate students are students working towards getting their PhD. And then underneath that, you'll find undergraduates. Not all labs may have undergraduates. It depends on the kind of school. But in general, this is how it works. And you can see here that high school students fall at the very bottom of this hierarchy list. And this is why it is so difficult to find a research experience or opportunity as a high school student. Because PIs are often professors at a university, let's just use Harvard for instance, so let's say a PI is at Harvard. Because they teach at Harvard and are employed by Harvard, they have an obligation to mentor and accept students from Harvard, whether they are a postdoc, a graduate student at Harvard, or an undergraduate student at Harvard. So kind of by that obligation, they have to prioritize everyone else ahead of you as a high school student. And that's nothing to say against the PIs, it's just how it kind of works, um, especially if the PI is working and the lab is hosted at Harvard. So this is why it's difficult, but uh, it is not impossible to find a, a research opportunity at a lab. You should still consider trying if this is something that is important to you. But yeah, this is just a slide to lay out sort of how a lab works, who are the people in the lab, and what even is a PI if you hear the word being thrown around. Um, and yeah, oftentimes when you reach out to a lab for uh, research opportunities, you will be reaching out to a principal investigator, a postdoc, or sometimes a graduate student. But your best bet is to go with the PI. And then they'll direct you to the postdoc or grad student if appropriate. Okay, so step one. First is to identify the areas that you are interested in. I will use myself as an example. So I knew in general that I was very interested in biology, but there's many different areas of biology from microbiology to psychology to neuroscience to stem cell biology. There's just so much out there. So the more specific you can get, the easier it will be to find labs that work in those areas of interest. So first, identify the areas that you're interested in. And then next, find labs in those areas. Let's say you're living in San Francisco Bay Area, California. I would recommend taking a look at universities in your local area and taking a look at the labs that are part of those universities. So for instance, UC Berkeley is a school that is in the Bay Area. Another one could be San Francisco State University, Cal State, there's many other schools here as well. So search online and find 
and take a look into the labs that operate in the areas you're interested in. Let's say if it's neuroscience, and you can find a neuroscience lab, and then compile that into a list. Once you have a list, start taking a deeper look into those labs that you might be interested in. Read the PI's background to learn more about what they teach in their area of specialty. And then I highly recommend reading around five papers from their lab. It can be difficult to fully understand a scientific paper as a high school student and even as a college student. It took me some time to learn how to read these papers. So oftentimes all you need to read is the introduction and the conclusion of the paper and then highlight and search any terms that you might not know. Your goal here is to get a general sense of what kind of research a particular lab does. And then next, you will want to email the principal investigator your resume, any descriptions or videos of your past project and highlights, and then an ask, seeing if there's any way that you could join the lab and get some experience there. Okay, so don't worry, I will walk you through how to craft that email. Let's talk about it now. So your email should first introduce yourself and your interest in the research area and specifically in that professor's lab. So let me use neuroscience as an example. If a lab is working on the neuroscience of the visual cortex or how our brain recognizes images, you will want to talk specifically to image recognition in neuroscience rather just saying you have a general interest in neuroscience. The more specific you can be and the more specific you can express interest in the area of research that that lab is doing, the better you will come across. Next, and this is where those five papers comes in, reference the papers from their lab that you have read to show that you are deeply interested in their work. And then third, write that you would be grateful for a research opportunity in their lab to work on XYZ projects, but also mention that you are open to working on other projects as well. Next, discuss any past projects or highlight any training or experiences you've had before and why the professor should and why the professors should accept you as an intern. And let me just quickly add a note here that sometimes you might not have any previous research experience and that is completely okay. Just cite the previous coursework you have done in biology. So if you've taken AP biology, talk about that. Have you done an online course, then mention that. Um, bring in relevant experiences and examples that you've had and focus on your strong interest in the researches, um, in the area of research that the lab is in. So realistically, as a high school student or even as an undergrad student, you won't have that much of a significant impact on the lab's work. So focus instead on your interest and also talk about how this lab would really help further your experience to help you reach your career or professional goals. And then lastly, thank them again for their consideration. Since you are at the bottom of the hierarchy as a high school student and occasionally as a college student, you may have to email many professors before one accepts you as an intern. So remember that it is okay to be told no. All you need is just one yes, and if nothing works out, remember that in the beginning of this video I covered a few alternatives that are available to you. And there's usually no expectation that you will have or that you should have research experience as a high school student. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, just keep on asking. And I will share in the next slide uh, a screenshot of the exact email that I sent to a professor at Harvard when I was asking if uh, they were accepting any undergraduate students. Now obviously as an undergrad student it is easier to get opportunities in the labs the, at your school because again professors do have an obligation to support the students at the school they work at. So it is a little bit different of a process and the format that I use in that email is slightly different but I really want to show you the email to give you an idea of how you can potentially reach out to a professor, especially if you are a current college student. And I have, I've straight up just included the screenshot and when I was taking a look at it, I realized there were some typos. And I just wanna share the idea that it's okay to not write a perfect email. At the end of the day, we're all human and it's just important to learn from our mistakes. So you can bet I'm gonna be careful not to have any more spelling mistakes in, the, in, the, in future emails. Oh, one thing I do want to add is that Grammarly is a really great way to um, check any of your texts, whether it's an email or a homework assignment, and they will help you 
um, polish your writing in terms of spelling, grammar, particular phrasing, being more concise, and all of that. And actually, I have an affiliate link for Grammarly. So Grammarly has not paid me to talk about them in this video, but if you would like to support this channel, it would really mean a lot to me if you're also interested in getting Grammarly using the link that I'll include in the description below. That will really help to support my channel and also enable me to continue making videos like these. So if you are at all interested in getting Grammarly, I even use it, it is awesome, um, use the link in the description below. And with that, here here's the email. Okay, so this is a little small. I'll try reading it. I've tried to block out identifying information. And yes, I'm old. This email was from 2016. So <laughs> um, here we go. So dear professor, my name is Kristen Fang, a freshman at Harvard College and perspective concentrator in molecular and cellular biology. So as you guys probably know, I studied neuroscience. I switched my majors. That's something that it's totally okay um, for you to do. But anyways, I, I'm writing to ask about opportunities for undergraduate research in your lab this summer or even as early as this semester. I am very interested in the intersection of cell biology and neuroscience. The process of rewiring the brain through reprogramming neurons of the cerebral cortex is fascinating. I recently came across the article XYZ in the Harvard Gazette and read about your, this is a typo, read about your lab's work in reprogramming neurons and how this re reprogramming changes how neighboring neurons communicate. The applications are amazing, from being able to fix malfunctioning pathological circuits to finding ways to replace neurons that have died in disease, and I would enjoy learning about this more in depth. More typos, that's totally fine. Yeah, Grammarly. Uh, if possible, I would like to continue this conversation in person. I'm available this week on Wednesday, etc. And I'm also available at other times. In the meantime, I've attached a copy of my resume and I'm happy to send any other information you may need. Thank you so much for your time. Sincerely, Kristen Fang. Okay, I read that pretty quickly. But there are many different ways that you can reach out to professors, especially if you are a current college student. I would recommend, if you are a college student, to and, and in a post-COVID time, to continue the conversation in person or during COVID via Zoom. And that's a really great way for you to express your interest in the lab in person and then also ask questions about what opportunities are available and give the PI a chance to get to know you. Any high schooler students watching this, feel free to use this same method as well of offering to continue the conversation via Zoom, and it just helps to keep uh, the professors engaged. So yeah, with that, that's the end of the video. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to leave any remaining questions in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them. And don't forget that you can find me at uh, mycollegelead.com and also join my Slack channel. I would really appreciate this if you could support my channel by giving this video a thumbs up and also subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.